this is our audience tonight. We're not letting them hear us because we have surprises in store for Chris Stockdale when a charity swim turns into playtime with dolphins, Carol Dawley when she finds going to pieces is pure magic, and Wendy Pritchard when she finds the father she's only known from an old snapshot. For these people and more, it's surprise, surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Scylla Black. to you. You know, it's surprising to me how many people, how many people are superstitious. Are you stu superstitious? <laughs> are you superstitious? Yes. Well, my, I must tell you about my friend. She's very superstitious. When she got married, she arranged for a chimney sweep to give her a kiss outside the church for good luck. Now, I don't know about good luck, because it was more like good muck. <laughs> Do you know, it cost her ten pounds to have a frock cleaned. And every time she sneezed, she had to fall a soot. <laughs> it's a shame, it's a shame. It's about this time in the show that I introduced my big mate Biggins. And I wonder, I'm just wondering, what anniversary he's celebrating this week? Where are you, Biggins? Where are you, Chuck? <laughs> clues set up. It was, do you know, it was to, to the night that this particular person sang this number and the crowds went wild and danced in the aisles in 1955. <laughs> Hang on a minute, Biggins. I didn't start till 1963. <laughs> 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 you little liar. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm talking about Bill Haley and the Comets. Do you know, it, it, it was this this very night that he started the rock and roll song. Oh, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, right? It went right into the top ten 29 years ago. I don't care what you say, all about these people coming every week. You come on here. He does, doesn't he, girls? Yes! You come on here, you surprise us every week in a different guise, but you're upsetting one little girl in particular. Oh. Naughty, naughty biggins. She's only 11. Her name is Kate Webster. She lives up all the way up there in Ormskirk, in Lancashire. And she doesn't care what you come on us, because whatever you come on us, she only looks upon you as a potato. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that very potato. <laughs> now hear that letter from a witch. <laughs> a witch, yes, and I've got, I've got the have? letter here. Yes, could oh, you hold that potato? I'll hold my please? potato, yes, <laughs> little thing. And I'd love to read it out, because it's about a son-in-law, this letter. It's a lovely letter. It says, Dear Scylla, my son-in-law calls me the old witch. <laughs> so I've tried for four years to turn him into a frock. <laughs> and I've just about managed to get the legs right, but would appreciate your help in completing the spell. <laughs> Can you help me, please? Yours craftily, Mrs. Helen Curry. <laughs> P.S. I think he's lovely, really. <laughs> Well, that surprised you. Where is he? Yes, that surprised you. Oh, Sergeant Stephen oh, Fremantle. So you called your mother-in-law a witch? I have for four years. <laughs> well, surprise, surprise. She's going to cast a spell on you tonight. She's actually going to turn you into a frog on this show. Come on, Helen. Helen, where are you, love? Yes, drag him down. Come on. <laughs> You don't look like a witch at all, Helen. No, I don't 
nothing, sir. Well, well you I, will be in the minute. I've got a few things for Helen here. Look, there we are, Helen. There we are. Uh, a slightly uh, big one. Can you cope with that, Helen? Yes. Now, don't forget. Do, any what? Any size at all. <laughs> well, each to his own. Not a lot I can say to that, Helen. Will I? <laughs> anyway, don't forget to flourish it, will you, Helen? No, 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 don't <coughs> get it carried away. Now, here's the. Um... Are you ready for this, Stephen? Yes, yeah. Well, why are you shaking like a leaf? <laughs> <laughs> have we got the spell? We have. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry. sorry, Stephen. Sorry. I'll there clear we are. the sinuses. It's an old book. Here we go. Now, you, you sure you're, you're sure about this? Why have you got your hands? But you're not in school. Und under your hands. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> come here, Helen. Helen, come Helen, here. Come here. Now, Helen, I want you to repeat after me because this is quite serious. <laughs> yes, it is. You've got to get your own back on him. <laughs> Here we go. Hocus pocus, rain and fog. Say that. Hocus pocus, rain and fog. Turn this <laughs> man into a frog. Turn this man into a frog. Flourish. Flourish. Wave <laughs> <laughs> well, you look absolutely smashing. Now you've had your revenge, Helen, haven't you? Thank you very much. Yeah. You certainly have. And we're not finished with you, Stephen. You're on the show till the very end. <laughs> you are going to be in this outfit. Not only that, you're going to be pulling our cues. <laughs> I'll pick. <laughs> if you'd like to go over there, Kermit, we'll see you later. But now it's time for the phone numbers game, the only game on television in which you, the viewer, can take part and win prizes. Now, here are the rules. Now, first, make up your card. Start with a big square like this. Divide it into 25 smaller squares, like this. Now put P-H-O-N-E across the top. And now add the last five digits of your phone number, including the dialing code down the left-hand side. The winner will be the first person to ring up with a straight line of five squares across, down, or diagonally containing the correct answers to the questions for those squares. We'll give you the questions and the number to call later in the show. Now, to give you a start, you can have some free squares that count towards a winning line without you having to write answers in them. As always, the middle square is free. Then, just for this week, the second under P, the fifth under H, and the first under N. Now, make sure you make a careful note of those free squares. Are you glad you came now? Very, yes. Well, we're all waiting to play the phone numbers game. <laughs> Shake that bag! And pull that first cue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's left a left-handed toad. <laughs> Thank you. P3. So if you've got P3, in what country was this woman born? More cubes, Ella. Well, before you pull the next cube, I must remind everybody sitting at home, we cannot repeat any of the questions, so please keep your ears and your eyes open. More cubes, Kermit. <laughs> <laughs> Red one, N2. What do you call a male duck? <laughs> More cubes. More cubes, Stephen. <laughs> oh, a yellow one this time. N5. So if you have N5, what month is in the title of this song?
have some more cues for you later on. And as soon as you have a complete line of five squares in any direction, give us a tinkle on tonight's number, which is 01936 9360. But please only phone us when you have a winning line. Oh, yes. Well, now we're going to show you a lovely piece of film about a Dr. Chris Stockdale. Now, he's in the audience tonight. Where are you, Dr. Chris Stockdale? Yeah. There he is. Oh, he's gorgeous, big <laughs> Oh, I bet he's got a lovely bedside manner. <laughs> anyway, Dr. Stockdale organised a sporting contest between his doctors and nurses to raise cash for the West Midland hospitals. Now, the contest included running, cycling and swimming, and they asked us to help out. Well, we didn't want to show them up, so we found someone who could run like a three-legged tortoise, cycle like a district nurse, <laughs> and swim like a lead balloon. <laughs> yes, you've guessed it. Begins. <laughs> Here I am in Solihull for a very special charity race. Behind me are over 80 nurses and doctors taking part in a very special triathlon. That's swimming and running and bicycling. And in fact, all the money they raise is going to be sent to a wonderful charity to all the hospitals in the area. So, off we go. <laughs> oh, this is it, right, we're off. Don't get carried away now, girls. The one with the nail through his head, that's the man we're after. Oh, this is fun. Come on, girls. Chris still hasn't a clue what we've got lined up for him. <laughs> Congratulations! Well done. What kept Thank you? you? What oh, I've been here for hours. I'm just too old for this, Chris. Too old for it. Well, yes. you've raised yet more money. But Thank listen, you. I couldn't come all the way to Sully Hall without giving you a surprise, surprise. <laughs> so your wife I Maggie see. tells one of your ambitions is to swim with dolphins. So Absolutely right. you're gonna swim with dolphins. Oh, that is fantastic. Thank you very much. Fantastic. So come out, Chris. Okay. Oh, you look wonderful. But listen, I think you need a little bit of assistance. And yeah. we've got one of the best assistants in the world. If you look down there, it's Duncan Goodhue. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet so you're going to take him uh, with the dolphins? No problem. Yes, yeah. no problem at all. Yeah, this is right. very nice, Duncan. <laughs> well, Duncan, I'd like to thank you very much indeed for coming down. But there's just one more thing I'd like you to hold me. Right. No. Oh, no. Yes. television. Here I am at Windsor Safari Park. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, I've been found by depth, but not so Chris and Duncan, who are about to join their thinned friends in here. I shall get out of the way. On purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Ambitious, so the dolphins. Do you have a good time? Wonderful, thank you, Chris. Good. Wonderful. What about you, Duncan? They beat me. They beat you. <laughs> I suppose, Chris, it'll be Wales next week. Well, it could be. You never know, do you? Well, surprise, surprise. Oh, no. We've got not only a whale, a killer whale called Winnie, 16 foot long, one and three quarter tons, and here she is. <laughs> Whale 
at the end, though? It really was a killer whale. Now I know how you got that nasty cold that oh, you got. Oh, it was very chilly that day, Scylla. But now it's time. You know, a lot of stories we've told on Surprise, Surprise have been about real courage. The one that we're going to tell you tonight is no exception. And the hero is in our audience tonight. Surprise, surprise, Walter Collins. Where are you, Walter? There he is up there. Now, I know, Walter, you weren't expecting at all to be on our show tonight. But we'd love you to come and join us. Would you come and join us down here, please? Because you've got one of the most marvellous stories that has to be told. <laughs> Walter, please sit down, because this story is out. It sent shivers down my spine when I heard about this story. Way back in 1945, you escaped from a prisoner of war camp along with some other paratroopers. And this was on the borders of Poland and Germany, is that right? That's right, yeah. Now, when you were on the run, you were with two men in particular that you became friends with. And these two men were from Yugoslavia. Now, can you tell me their names? Uh, Milo. Milovacic and um, Svetko. Milo and Svetko. That's absolutely right. And in fact, they risked their lives helping you, didn't they? And there was a story about hiding in a pigsty? That's right, yes. What happened there? Well, we were um, getting chased by these Germans, and um, we got along this canal banking, and we suddenly saw these two men on the other side of the fence. And I said to them, Englanders, and um, they said, right, come with them. So we jumped over the fence, threw into the pigsties. <laughs> <laughs> and the following day, in fact, you stole an SS uh, German car. That's right. Didn't yes. you? And you uh, went thousands of miles with it and escaped. Mm. But you haven't uh, seen those two men since then, have you? No, we haven't. You have not seen them since 1945, although you have had maybe one or two Christmas cards from right. one of them. Yeah. Well, we've tracked them down, and they're here tonight. They've come to say hello to you, all the way from Yugoslavia. Say hello to Milo and Svetko. English, do you? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but you became friends yeah. in those far distant days, didn't you? Isn't that smashing? But don't worry about it. Tonight we've got an interpreter for you. Oh. So after the show, we know you're going to have a really good gab, gab about all those lovely memories and not so nice memories so long ago. There's also one other person that was with you. You might remember him. He had no trouble with English because the, he was an Australian. Oh, yes. Yes. Do you remember him? Yes. Ted Con Condon? That's right. Yes. Well, he's an Australian. He lives in Queensland. He's not there tonight, though. We've flown them all the way over from Queensland <laughs> to say hello to you. It's a long way to come to say hello to your mates, isn't it? Oh, it's worth but it. But it's worth it. It's been a long time. Well, it's lovely yeah. to see you all so, here tonight. Mila's just given me this picture of the three of them, look, in uh, their uniform. That's if we can see that, smashy. which is marvellous. That's absolutely great. And I know you're all dying to, you're all dying to have a chat. On, uh, oh, after. more pictures. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is Tower Bridge, look. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you can speak English or not. As I say, we have got the That's interpreter. <laughs> and when you all go upstairs late and have a drink and a good gab, in the meantime, we're going to take a break and see in a few minutes. They are lovely pictures. <laughs> 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 
And there are more surprises to come when Hilda Keenan gets a keep fit Silligram 50 years on. And Wendy finds she hasn't got to sacrifice everything to make her dream come true. Me. What are you doing here? Well, I've come to uh, see you, Miss Head. <laughs> what? It's Miss Black. Well, Miss Blackhead. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we've been uh, we've been sitting around the back, and we've we've got a monitor around there, and we've been looking at the audience. And to be quite honest, uh, they're not up to much. <laughs> well, I think they're a marvellous audience, Michael. Will you shut up, Safari? So good. <laughs> I'll test them out, right? Uh, a, a quick impression? Please. Right. A startled deer. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> I told you there was something wrong with it. <laughs> just come in here. <laughs> Are you here for the show or takeaway? <laughs> Yes, this is the one. Up you go. Come on, come with me. Come on, up you go. Me. Yes. Sit yourself down. Yeah. Please. Sit Please. Down. Right. Hello. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Just cut it out. Wait. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, <laughs> would you take this book in your right hand, please? No, just your right. That's it. And repeat after me. I believe. I believe. I believe. <laughs> for every. Do you want me to sing it? I said for every. I didn't Sorry. say, do you want me to sing it? <laughs> so, testing. Yes. Excuse me, is this a piece of your brain? <laughs> I believe. I believe. For every. For every. Drop. Drop. Of rain. Of rain. That falls. That falls. A flower grows. A flower grows. <laughs> All together now. Every, every time I hear a newborn baby cry. Ah, silence and cold. Objection. Sustained. Overall. <laughs> Tell the ladies and gentlemen of the audience your full name, please. Paul McGee. I suggest that that is a lie. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, how do you find this man? Guilty! <laughs> right, I'd like to sum up. Two and two is four. <laughs> and four is eight. Uh, Michael, I'd like to plead for him. You, you're oh. a silly pleader. <laughs> Well, I'll give you one last chance, right? <laughs> See if you can cheer yourself up, right? Yes, yes. There was a young man from Notting Hill who swallowed an exploding pill. His arms dropped off, his legs blew away, and his nuts were found in Brazil. I'm off now. Are you? Yeah, do you want me to, uh... You said that like there's something wrong. <laughs> uh, do you want me to pop downstairs and... Please, would you pop downstairs and get Paul a nice, you know, I'll get the drinks drink. and all that, because yeah. he was a good sport. Yeah, right. thank okay, you. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll pop downstairs and uh, see if we can get all the stuff for you, all OK? Right. So I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now it's 
time for our phone numbers game again. Now, don't forget, the first one to phone in with the correct line of squares will win a prize of their choice. And we have two more prizes for the runners-up. So, more cubes, Silla. <laughs> Have you had that head on all this time? <laughs> More cubes, Stephen. Are you all right, Chuck? They're in there somewhere. Look. They're there. I think you enjoy doing that. H6. Well, if you've got an H6, in what London square is this statue? More cubes. Dare I ask it? More cubes. <laughs> and a blue one. P7. What material can be bought in reams? More cubes. More cubes, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? You got what? Have, have I ever tried to grab one of what? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've tried to grab a cube, yes. O3. So if you got O3, who had a hit with this tune? <laughs> And just to remind you, this is the number to ring, 01-936-9360. So, Sinna, what's next? I got a marvellous letter from Judith about her dad, Bob Rotherham. Now, Bob Rotherham is a bus conductor, and he, he actually is absolutely a nutter, according to Judith, because <laughs> he loves robotic dancing. And she thinks that we ought to have him on the telly doing this robotic dancing. <laughs> and apparently, he's, he's quite a big lad as well, apparently. <laughs> So I can't wait. So I'm going to phone him up now. As I say, he's a bus conductor. He's en route to the bus station. <laughs> so I only hope he's at the terminus. And this week it's ten digits, so I... Oh. oh, it's a long way away. Yes, keep your fingers crossed. I'll check the number. I hope he's there. The frog just... <laughs> <laughs> Extension 4574, please. Who's that, please? Who wants to know? Who? <laughs> Over that, please. I will. <laughs> Hello? 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 Hello. Have I finally gotten through to Bob Rotherham, please? Is that you, Chuck? <laughs> That's the second time tonight. Surprise, surprise, it's Scylla here. Okay. <laughs> well, I must tell you all about why I'm, why I'm phoning you up, you see, because you've got a lovely daughter, you know. You know your Judith? Yeah. She absolutely thinks the world of you, and she, she wrote me a gorgeous letter telling me all about you and your little grandson. She said you were a bit of a nutter. She said that... You love to do robotic dancing. <laughs> she said that you would love to do all that you do, robotic dancing. You know, like robots. Uh, uh, I do a little bit, not so much though. <laughs> you do a little bit? Well, that'll do for us, kid. Because we want you to do a little bit on the telly. Oh, dear. <laughs> now, don't worry about a thing, because we want you to come on the show next week. Yes. What are you going to, what are you going to do to your Judith when you get home? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not repeating it over the phone. <laughs> well, we look forward to seeing you on the show, Bob. Don't worry about a thing. We'd love to see you in person. All right, see you next week. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Ta-ra, Bye. Bye. Night, night. Well, we surprised Caroline Dawley on the phone last week, and guess what? Here she is. Come on in, Caroline. You look a treat. You told us on the phone last week 
or that you're dying to be sawn in half. Now, is that right? That's right. Well, I'm sorry, Caroline. We, we, we couldn't arrange that. Ah. Uh. <laughs> but what we, what we have arranged is for you to be sawn in three. <laughs> <laughs> and here to do it are Sunny Hayes and Company. <laughs> well, don't worry about it, Chuck. We'll try and put you together before the next lot comes up, all right? Okay. We'll take a break now. See you in a couple of minutes. Now, here are the answers to last week's phone game. And in a moment, Wendy's family fly 10,000 miles to be together for the first time. together now so unfortunately not in the right order but Sonny's working on it at the moment <laughs> well we're gonna keep our fingers crossed <laughs> meanwhile it's time to play the final part in our phone numbers game but before you pull that final cube Stephen I think you should take your head off you know <laughs> <laughs> well, take your head off 
Oh, oh, put it back on again. <laughs> <laughs> What will it be? What will it be? I beg your pardon. <laughs> Try and grab a cue, yeah. and there we are. <laughs> oh, one. So, if you've got O oh, one, which sport is played at Lords? And now, here's your bonus question. If you know the answer, you can put it into any square you want to complete a winning line. And here it is. What thoroughfare is in the title of this song? <laughs> And the phone number to ring is 01936-9360. Now, as soon as you have a winning line, rush to that phone, because then it's a race. The first three people to get through with the correct line will get the prizes. Now for last week's winners. The runners-up were Mrs. S. Moore and Stuart Bartram, both from London, who each receive a portable television set. You know, we haven't had many winners from London, have we, Sarah? I know, they all seem to be coming from London this week. Actually, last week's winner's not from London, but I call it London. It's a bit further out. Sorry, Wallington in Surrey. And his name is Michael O'Neill, and he's in our audience tonight. Where are you, Michael? He's over there. Welcome to the show. Michael, tell us, what have you chosen as your special surprise prize? I would like, uh, for my family, who... Uh obviously helped with the, um, the game. A uh, video recorder, please, Silla. A video recorder? Well, surprise, surprise, you've got it. Congratulations, Michael. And now it's time to go out and about with Silla as she delivers yet another Sillagram. Yes, Biggins, and this week it's for Hilda Keenan. Now, when Hilda was 14, she helped to found the Woodford and Ilford branch of the Women's League of Health and Beauty. They celebrate their golden anniversary this week, 50 years of fitness begins. So we thought we'd join in their celebrations and give Hilda a special surprise. Oh, it's got to be. Oh, my goodness me. I'm so excited. I'm a bit frightened, actually. Um, <laughs> the movie. <laughs> Hello? Hang on a minute. Hello, girls. Girls. Hang on. <laughs> I'm looking for Hilda Keenan. Where are you, Hilda? Terrible. What do you mean, terrible? <laughs> Hilda, surprise, surprise. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> do you know why I'm here? Well, I'm guest so now. <laughs> I am here because all these lovely friends of yours, they all, they all thought you deserved a special award because you have been, <laughs> you have been 50 years mm -hmm. in health and beauty. Try it. <laughs> well, I am here <laughs> to give you that special award. Can yes. you guess what? No. <laughs> surprise, surprise! I'm going to sing you a syllogram. Oh. See you later. Come on, girl. Keep young and beautiful. It's your duty to be beautiful. Keep young and beautiful. If you want to be loved, don't fail to do your stuff with a little powder and the puff. Keep young and beautiful. If you want to be loved, if you're wise and
Well, now, we've got a lovely story to tell you in which we surprised Wendy Pritchard up there in Scouseland. Now, she's been trying to raise enough money to meet the father she hasn't seen for 36 years. Our story starts with a card in a shop window. Just have a look at this. This is the card that Wendy's put in the post office advertising everything she owns. Now, that's how determined she is to meet her dad. Well, surprise, surprise, not only is she going to get a wish, but also she's going to keep all her furniture as well. She won't be needing that anymore. Come with me. Now, Wendy's expecting callers about her furniture. I wonder what she's going to say when she sees me. I hope she's in. Isn't it exciting? How do she sold any furniture yet? Surprise, surprise, Wendy! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. I've just come from once. <laughs> I've just come from the post office. Why would you run up the post office? Well, there's a card in the post oh, office oh, saying, Shut oh, up, love. Oh. oh, it's all right. It's all right, Queen. Well, there's a card in the post office saying that you're advertising all your furniture. Is that right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, tell us why you're advertising all your furniture. Oh, my God, let me pull myself together. Um, I just want me to have 36 years. And um, when I get out of them, and the only thing I've got is me being the chickens I don't feel. Well, don't worry, Wendy. You're not going to have to sell your furniture. Because <laughs> you're going to get your coat on now and come with me to the airport. Go away for me, Dad. Just get your coat on. Surprise, surprise. Get your coat on. You're coming with us. All right? You're joking, aren't you? Nobody do this for me. Well, we've done it on surprise, surprise. <laughs> come on, though. Come on, Queenie. Come in, Mr. Step inside. <laughs> well, Wendy, here we are. We're on the way to the airport now. And what do you what do you think your your children will say? You've got two, haven't you? Two sons. Two boys, yeah, James and John. They're made up and I found me, me dad. And I've spoken to him on the phone. You've actually spoken to your dad? Oh yeah. You going straight? Spoke to my dad on the phone and I rang him up. And um, they were they were made up. My youngest boy cried on the phone. I spoke to him. And was, was, was your dad surprised when you phoned him up? Was he expecting your call? Or was it just out the blue? Well, I, I rang New Zealand. I rang Social Welfare. I know she'd answer the phone for a Liverpool girl, Maureen Parrish. So I said, I'm ringing from Liverpool, England. She said, oh, I'm from Liverpool. <laughs> I'm from West Derby. I said, that's where I'm ringing from. She emigrated 12 months ago, so I told her my story. She said, you leave it with me. I'll personally go to this address and I'll speak to your father. So she went, she'd ring me back in a couple of days. So I rang her back and um, she said, oh, have you got a lovely yeah. father? Should I have had tea with him? Ah. Uh. She'd had tea with me, Dad. I said, does he want to know me? She said, does he want to know you? So she gave me his phone number. And I rang. Oh, it's a smashing story. It's a smashing story. You've been a little bit sleepy. We didn't want to. We, we didn't want you to meet him with all those people. Your dad's waiting downstairs. Come here. Come on, wait, Wendy. Is your dad? <laughs> She's been waiting for you all this time. She's ever so worried. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Hey. Boys, where's the lads? They're in school. Oh, good. I need to take him away. The boys are now in school. That's a little extra surprise before we take you to London for the show. 
Your lads are here. Where are the grandsons? Where's Jamie and John? Come on, lads, say hello to your granddad. <laughs> Why don't we all go and have a cup of tea? Yeah. And relax. It's going yeah. to get them brand new phone. You're on the telly now, lads. Look. <laughs> piece of film Wendy and Alex you've flown all the way over from New Zealand uh, have you gotten over the shock yet Wendy I don't think yeah and I noticed too in that film Wendy that at the end you didn't recognize your dad there well I've never seen my dad so I was, was only 18 months old and my dad went yes but all you had really was an old photograph didn't you 44 years old the photograph was. is it really well we've got that photograph here we can there, it up on the screen there it is but that's not you though is it Wendy that's my oldest sister, Maureen. Maureen? Yeah. That's your Maureen. That's your eldest child, Alex. Mm. And you've never seen her for 36 years. No. Well, you're all going to tonight. She's here. Your Maureen's here with your grandson, Wayne. Come in, Maureen. Come in, Wayne. He's a married man, you know, Alex. Huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm trying to sit down. Have a sit down, Have a sit, down. sit down, you sit Wait, down. Come over here. Wait, <laughs> sit down. Sit next to your dad. It's an absolutely smashing, isn't it? Lovely. <laughs> all a big shock to you. And it's all a big surprise. And you know, the surprises haven't finished. I know I've got one more surprise for you. Yes. One more surprise. <laughs> It's a grandchild you've never ever met. Now she lives a little bit further away from Liverpool. No. Yes. It's your Lorraine, all the way from Saudi Arabia. Come in, Lorraine. <laughs> Can I say she's like a film star, isn't she? And I remember when we were talking off the camera, Wendy, I remember you saying, oh, I wish our lol, you call her lol, I wish our lol could be here to see this. Well, she's here tonight. There's Elsie over there, There's Elsie Come on, Elsie, Come on, what's Elsie love. sitting over there? Elsie is 90 years old, and she's flown all the way over from New Zealand just to be with Alex. Come on, Elsie, come and join us. Well, now we've got an absolute See? complete family. It's a marvellous ending to a marvellous story. I just love them. Give them up. Oh, you're very well. You're very well. Have a good time after the show. nothing really else for me to say you know they've all said it all over there we've had some marvelous people on the show i'd just like to say a very big night to you all and especially my big mate biggins bye bye Stella. see you next week
Subject to a final check, the winner of this week's phone game is Daryl Keith of London. The phone lines are now closed.